Okay, today is um, January 16th, 2023. In this video here, I want to talk to you about some things you can do if your Kirby suddenly does not turn on. Now, I hear this complaint a lot, like, I went to grab my Kirby vacuum cleaner out of my closet and tried to turn it on and it's dead. It won't turn on, it won't start. 99% of the time, it's a very simple fix. And most people kind of assume that, oh, it just quit working and so I've got to take it in and get it repaired, or I've got to get a new, a new vacuum cleaner. Most of the time, that is not the case. And I'm going to tell you a few um, steps that you can take as the consumer to make sure that you can fix this yourself without spending any money. And it's very simple. Most of the time, you don't even have to take it apart. Now, first step. I know this may sound silly, but make sure the power cord is plugged in. <laughs> Just make sure it's plugged in. If it is plugged in and it's still not working, try another outlet. And check your breaker box or fuse box to make sure that the outlet in that room has power and then it's on. If all those things check out, your next thing is to look for breaks or cracks or anything like that in the power cord insulation. If the cord is damaged, replace the cord with a genuine Kirby power cord. Make sure that it is all in good shape. Make sure that there's no nicks, no scratches, nothing like that. If the cord is frayed or cut or anything like that, do not use the unit. You must replace the cord before you can use it again. It's not safe. If there's any exposed wires anywhere or anything like that, make sure that everything is checking out good. Also check any areas by the handle all down in here. Um, Hand me down here. Any strain portions right there. And make sure that you check where it goes in to the vacuum cleaner itself, which is down here. Make sure it's fully inserted. There's a cover. You can unscrew that cover and make sure that it's pushed in. It's basically like a computer cord, you know? It pushes in the same way, pretty much. Um, so make sure that's fully inserted. Make sure the cord is in good shape. It's not cracked or frayed or cut or anything like that. Um, and if it is cut or frayed or damaged, um, Replace the cord immediately. Do not use the unit until that cord is replaced um, for your safety. So if that all checks out, make sure that all accessories and everything else is properly attached. So Get back here, make sure that 
guys can see all this. I'm going to make sure that all accessories, all of your heads, your nozzles, everything is on properly. The unit will not turn on if any of these are not properly installed. So I'm going to take the nozzle off here. If nothing is on this front here, there are two safety switches here to engage when you put a hose on or a nozzle on or anything like that. Um, something has to be on here and it has to engage that switch. Make sure that the tab on your hose is not broken off because that tab needs to be there to push these safety switches in to allow the unit to turn on. Now I'm going to plug in my machine here and I'm going to show you what happens when things aren't hooked up properly. Now, one thing that you can do is, first let me get this plugged in so I can show you what I'm talking about because it's a very simple concept. Um, it's just a safety um, to prevent you from getting hurt or a child from getting hurt or blowing dust um, where you don't want it to be blown. Now, I'm going to show you the power switches down here. It will not turn on unless an attachment hose, nozzle, shampoo tray, floor buffer, anything that goes on the front of here. If there's nothing in front here, it's not going to turn on. So, you're going to take your nozzle, make sure that it's installed, and I know this sounds silly, I mean, can't really use it without anything on it, but it's worth mentioning. Put the nozzle on to the front of the Kirby. Make sure the red arrows on the belt lifter are lined up so that way it can go on. Lock the nozzle down with this nozzle lock. Turn the belt lifter. right until the green arrows line up. Now that nozzle is on and we hit the power switch. It turns on. Now one other area that could be a problem is the exhaust port right here. Just as, just as the same thing as the front, you want to make sure that everything that is supposed to go on here, whether it's a bag assembly, shampoo tank, whatever it is, and this is a common thing that I've heard is people will convert these 
to the shampooer to shampoo their carpet and then they'll put it all back together and they haven't put this bag on properly and so when they go to use it again to vacuum normally it doesn't turn on and they're kind of panicked now what is important to know is this bag the emptor comes off okay so this is the bag assembly now just as with the nozzle there are safety switches in behind the exhaust port here I don't know if you can see that but here's the exhaust port you want to make sure that those are kind of free of debris stuff so they can engage properly and I think because same thing there's no bag on here or there's no tank or nothing on here so it won't turn on so one common mistake that people will make is they'll put their bag on and they'll basically put it on the exhaust port like that and they'll think it's on but what they forgot to do is it's not locked in so they think it's on here okay good it looks like it's on you know we're done but it's still not going to turn on what you need to do is you need to make sure that with this bag as you put it on there are two arrows there's an arrow on the exhaust port and an arrow on the boot or the mini amp door. You're going to line up those arrows, push it down, straight down gently, and then what you're going to do, see if I can turn it so you can see it, you're going to push the amp door towards the machine. You gotta kind of push it firm so it'll lock in place. Now, the Kirby will turn on. 99% of the time, those are the two issues that cause the Kirby not to start. Is the nozzle or the hose is not properly installed on the front or the bag assembly or shampoo tank is not properly installed on the exhaust port here now if you've done all those things everything checks out and you make you've made sure the bag is fully inserted firmly on there you made sure the cord is good there's no breaks in the cord there's nothing going on cord is plugged in properly everything like that then most likely the problem is the carbon brushes on the motor and what those are is an electrical motor so an AC motor has an armature and two sticks of carbon that stick out and make contact with the armature to allow it to run those after 
many, many, many hours of use will wear down and eventually not have enough length to make contact with the armature. And in that case, with Kirby vacuum cleaners, you can replace those carbon brushes. It's not the hardest thing to do, but you can do it yourself if you would like. You can order a set of carbon brushes for like, I believe like 10 or $15, somewhere in that ballpark. Online, eBay, Amazon, wherever. And you can open it up and replace those yourself. Or you can take it to somebody who knows how to do that and they can do it for you. And most of the time that is worst case scenario because these Kirby's are built to last. They are built to be repaired. They are built to be rebuilt over and over and over again. So most likely, most of the time, a Kirby doesn't get so bad to where it's not worth fixing. Eventually they could, but if you've taken care of your Kirby, if you've maintained it, if you have treated it well, and you have maintained it and really treated it nicely, then most likely it's going to be worth the $12 or so to put in new carbon brushes. Maybe a little more if you pay somebody else to do it. But that's still way cheaper. And worst case scenario, if you are the original owner and you bought it brand new and even if you're not but especially if you're the original owner and you bought it brand new m most of the time Kirby will give you a lifetime rebuild agreement and what that means is at any point in time you can call up Kirby and you can tell them I would like to send my machine in for a complete factory rebuild. And what they will do is you will send this off to them and ship it to the Kirby headquarters. And they will take your Kirby. They will look over everything. They will take it apart completely, every piece. They will replace any worn parts, put all brand new seals, brand new bearings, brand new brushes, brand new stuff like that in the motor, in the machine, um, replace the cord if it needs it, replace the outer bag if it needs it. They will do all of that for whatever price that they quoted you back when you bought the machine new. Now, you can still do that even if you're not the original owner, but they might quote you a little bit higher price due to, you know, inflation over the years. But I believe, I believe the highest price I've heard is like 300 and something dollars or something to send it to Kirby and they will completely rebuild it for you. And I will tell you that is so worth it because these machines when they're brand new are 1200, 1500, 2000 dollars is what most people will pay. And so 
that is a great investment. So, but that's just worst case scenario. Most of the time, it's just a bag that's not properly attached or a nozzle that's not properly attached. So check those things first, do the simple stuff, and work your way up to the more advanced stuff later. So I hope that was helpful. Um, if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. Thank you for watching this video, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.